Food Heals Podcast, Episode 92. When I was 20 years old working at Vogue magazine, if you came up to me and said, go meditate and here's a green juice and your body's all energy and it can heal itself, I would have been like, lady, get (laughs) the hell out of my way. (laughs) Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In real cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat and stress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately. All right, Food Heals Nation, thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. And I'm Susie Hardy. Food Heals Nation, today we bring you a guest that you're going to love. Amy Valpone, who is editor-in-chief of TheHealthyApple.com, is a Manhattan celebrity chef, culinary nutritionist, professional recipe developer, food photographer, writer, and motivational speaker. Amy specializes in simple, gluten-free, soy-free, and dairy-free clean eating recipes. Like many of our guests, she has a personal healing story that fueled the fire of her passion for clean, holistic eating. Amy healed herself from a decade of chronic pain from Lyme disease, polycystic ovarian syndrome, hypothyroidism, adrenal fatigue, leaky gut, and heavy metal toxicity. Amy now shares her story of how clean eating and detoxing saved her life in order to inspire you that you can do the same. And her work has appeared on, and this is a long, distinguished list. Get ready, Allison. I'm ready. (laughs) Martha Stewart, ABC News, Fox News Health, WebMD, The Huffington Post, The Food Network, PBS, and in publications such as Glamour Magazine, Clean Eating Magazine, Self Magazine, Prevention Magazine, just to name a few. That's just a few? That's just a few. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, that is a very distinguished list. And Amy's first cookbook, Eating Clean, The 21-Day Plan to Detox, Fight Inflammation, and Reset Your Body, debuted in stores nationwide March 8th, 2016. And before we get to our interview with Amy, we just have to tell you about today's sponsor. Our sponsor today is the Global Healing Center, where you can get 20% off any Global Healing Center brand product. Like Oxy Powder. I love Oxy Powder. It is a safe and effective colon cleanse product that uses the power of oxygen to gently cleanse and detoxify your entire digestive tract. It relieves of gas, bloating, occasional constipation. It it works, Food Heals Nation. I'm just going to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, they still have our old favorites, the Parfait Visage Wrinkle Reducing Cream and my fave, the Aqua Spirit Refreshing Spray Beach in a Bottle. Beach in a Bottle, Food Heals Nation. You can also try their O2 Zap ozonated olive oil, and this helps with eczema and acne. So we get a lot of questions about those two. Besides changing your diet, which we know is number one, check out the O2s app. They're all organic, all vegan, all natural. Lots of great products, Food Heals Nation. I buy from them regularly. My whole family does. Check them out at globalhealingcenter.com and use the discount code FOODHEALS for 20% off any Global Healing Center brand product. Next up, our interview with Amy. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. All right, today we're here with healthy Manhattan celebrity chef Amy Valpone. After suffering for years from chronic pain and visiting over 500 doctors, wow, wow, Wow. (laughs) who told her nothing was wrong with her, Amy was finally diagnosed by functional and integrative doctors with a multitude of issues, including Lyme disease and polycystic ovarian syndrome. She also learned that she could not digest gluten, soy, or sugar, and decided that for her health, she had to overhaul her lifestyle. Amy adopted an organic, clean lifestyle, and with the help of acupuncture, yoga, meditation, herbal medicine, along with eating organic, fresh foods, she restored her body remaining symptom-free ever since. I can't wait to hear this story. Amy also had all of her mercury fillings removed from her mouth, went through two years of IV chelation, detoxed her home from cosmetics to cleaners. What a story. I can't wait to hear it in her own words. Welcome, Amy. Welcome, Amy. Thank you. Well, you guys really did your homework on me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Yes, we did. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you have so much information on your website. You have such an interesting story. I mean, I have... I've met plenty of people that have been the doctors and they can't figure out why the the patient is not feeling well, but 500, you really saw 500 doctors? 
I did. As like pathetic as that sounds, it's um you no, know going it's out to, it <laughs> crazy. You know, when I was at Mayo Clinic, I saw over a hundred doctors, and then when I was in the hospital, you know, hospital for special surgery, and then you know, I exhausted about fifteen hospitals throughout all of New Jersey and New York, and at each of those hospitals, I saw at least thirty doctors. So that's where a lot of the numbers came from. But a lot of other doctors came from me literally running around kind of like a crazy person when I was in my 20s trying to figure out going from doctor to doctor to doctor, which was pretty sad and and really traumatizing. (laughs) It is really sad and traumatizing because it starts to wear on you mentally, I'm sure. Oh, you gosh, let me tell you, you know, it's interesting now that I'm out of chronic illness and, you know, I'm 33 now. And so I'm in perfect health, but I have to tell you the last part of my healing is coming from me doing the healing on the trauma in my mind from all of this. Yeah. And I really feel like that'll be my, what my next book is about, because I think a big part of the healing we don't realize is kind of like in our subconscious and, and can suck us back in, you know? Yeah. And we talk about this all the time because for me, that was such a foreign concept. Once I learned how to heal my body, I was like, this is it. I just have to eat well and life is wonderful. But that's not true. If you're not taking a holistic approach and looking at your mind, body and spirit, you're going to be missing something and not understanding why you're still not at your optimal health. So I would love to talk about that. But first, can you just go back and tell us like, what symptoms were you experiencing that you had to go to 500 doctors to figure out what was wrong with you? Definitely. So when I was about 22, I was working in corporate America and my legs started swelling up with about 40 pounds of fluid every day. Mm. So I know it was, and I was working at like Vogue magazine of all places, right? So (laughs) you got to look hot there. I can't have those swollen legs. Totally. I cannot even tell you. So it was so bad that I couldn't even take my pants off by the end of the day. And so I would wake up in the morning and I was fine. But by the end of the day, my legs were about, you know, 40 pounds heavier. My body was about 40 pounds heavier. That's crazy. If, you know, you got, I got the whole nine yards, you know, stop eating sodium, stop drinking too much water. Like, and I was like, this is, this is nuts. So after a few, like two weeks, I think of it, I went to the emergency room just to be like, what's going on here? Cause I didn't even know where to go. Sure. And so they took my white blood cell count and, you know, just like regular vitals. And my white blood cell count was like 1.1 which pretty much means like you're dead because normal is like 4.0. Mm. And so they thought I had leukemia. So they rushed me to St. Vincent's Cancer Center, literally like bent me over and gave me a bone marrow biopsy. And so that mm. started the entire journey. And I had to wait, you know, five days for the results thinking I had cancer. And the next, gosh, four years I spent, it was negative. So I did not have leukemia, but my bone marrow was like this jelly, jelly substance. And so they thought I was anorexic. They thought I, you know, was crazy. They couldn't find something wrong with me. And so every two weeks I'd have to go to the cancer center for blood work to see if my vitals were getting better, which they weren't. Mm. And so I exhausted all the doctors in New York city. And so they sent me to Mayo clinic for a week where they did another bone marrow biopsy. And they again found nothing wrong. And they said, you know, we're dismissing you. We did a whole week of workup and we can't find anything wrong with you. So things started to get, just get progressively worse. I started to start to feel worse. I had something called SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. And they put me on this really crazy antibiotic called Zyfaxin and put me on like four rounds of it. And mm. so they told me not to take probiotics while I was on it. Oh my God. I thought it was crazy. And these were like big time doctors from like the best GI hospital in Manhattan, which was crazy. So Long story short, from all of the junk that they were giving me, I was on steroids, painkillers, water pills. I had myositis in my leg muscles, so they were doing muscle biopsies on me, and I could barely walk. Mm. And I contacted C. diff colitis, and you get that from hospitals and also from like overuse of antibiotics. And so I was given 24 hours to live. And oh, my God. Yeah, I was on disability from my job, and we exhausted all the hospitals in New York and New Jersey, and my parents took me down to Philadelphia. And so I laid there with morphine dripping, you know, into my arms and oh my, my human resources department called me and said, we think you're kidding. Cause you know, cause you're blogging. And I was like, <laughs> this is insane. I am never, ever, ever going back to a corporate job ever again. Like they don't care about me. I can't do this. Like I'm going to, if I survive and if I make it out of here, I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life to helping other people realize they're not crazy and something really is wrong. And so that's what I did. <laughs> oh my God. Your story right now is giving me chills. My jaw well, is dropped. That was just like yeah. the beginning of it because then I started to understand 
which we'll talk about, I'm sure, in a little bit, but functional integrative medicine. And through that, I mean, they found Lyme disease, which was false negatives for 15 years and polycystic ovarian syndrome and leaky gut and chronic candida and hypothyroidism. And I mean, fibromyalgia and Epstein-Barr. I mean, it was like a waterfall of, I mean, I literally was like, what, what? Like, it was just insane. And so that really sparked, you know, my healing journey. And I started to realize like, I can heal my body. I know I can do this. And it took, you know, I had to figure out that I had heavy metals and mold and, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure, you know, the whole shebang, getting your mercury fillings removed and going through IV chelation and detoxing your, your whole life from chemicals. And, you know, and here I am 20 living in, you know, New York city where everybody's like out partying every night. And I'm like, I can only really drink water and like steamed broccoli. (laughs) So you're 20 years old. You're given 24 hours to live. You're on morphine. And then what happened? How did you turn this around at this point? So I ended up coming back to New York. And that's when I started to discover functional integrated medicine. And I was like, I'm going to figure this out. And so I talk about it like the whole story in my book and, and really the process that I went through and how it just started by me starting with a functional medicine doctor and being like, you know what? I'm going to figure out what's going on and what's wrong with me. And they found, you know, the heavy metals and the mold and the candida and and everything else that I had mentioned earlier. And they got me off the steroids and the painkillers and the water pills and started healing my body. And it was pretty incredible. And it was pretty emotional as well, because for the first time, someone had actually figured out what was wrong with me. And so that was just mind blowing to me because for so many years, people told me that I was crazy. Yeah. So... When that happened, I actually came out on my blog with my story because before that, everyone just thought I was anorexic and crazy. And so once I had the answers, I was like, okay, I'm going to come out with this and talk to people. And that's when my blog really started to take off. And it went from just being a food blog to being like, this is my journey. This is what I'm going through. This is what I'm doing. And this is how I'm healing my body and trying to figure out how to be healthy in a real way. Because, you know, at the end of the day, your doctor doesn't go home with you. You really have to be your own doctor. Not, not just, unless you're really lucky. To, oh my God, that's the <laughs> yeah, exact That's a joke. <laughs> it's so funny. I said, if he does, can I please have his number? <laughs> and is um, he on Grey's Anatomy? Like, <laughs> yeah, but I think that like, not to self-diagnose, but like you've got to be, in, you know your body better than anyone else. And these doctors were just experimenting on me and they don't know any better. They, they're known to give drugs and they don't understand how to heal these underlying imbalances. And it's, it's really sad. And so that's really what I started to do. And and I went through about 10 functional integrative medicine doctors and, and focused on everything from candida to thyroid to gut to heavy metals. And I realized not one doctor will ever heal you. You need a team of doctors that that understand everything. So I had one person for chelation, one for thyroid, one for gut, one for candida, one for Lyme. And as wonderful as they all were, you know, they're specialists in their field. So you know, the Lyme person didn't understand the gut and the gut person didn't understand Lyme. And so I had to have them all work together. I mean, it was, it was a full-time job and you have to be in charge of all of them. And so that was a really, really big wake up call. Absolutely. And Amy, can you tell our listeners, cause I actually, I know a little bit about functional and integrative doctors, but can you just, can you tell us the difference between those and regular old Western doctors? Of course, definitely. So a functional medicine doctor, so say, for instance, your father walks into a doctor's office and say, you know, the Western medicine doctor would say, you know, hey, Tony, you have high cholesterol Mm -hmm. and here's Lipitor. And they'd see you for a few minutes and dismiss you and that's it. You go get your prescription refilled and you're on Lipitor. You don't change your diet. You don't change your environment. You don't change your stress. Mm -hmm. Now, a functional integrative medical doctor, on the other hand, is actually sitting with you for like an hour or two and reviewing what you're eating, how your stress is, you know, what's going on in your life right now and your whole history, what kind of pipes you had in your house when you grew up, you know, how much seafood you're eating, you know, for heavy metals, like maybe mold exposure, like all these different things that we don't even think about. Right. And so the chemicals that are in our environment and and different things like that. And that was my big wake up call. And so I had to figure out how to detox my cleaning supplies, my beauty products, my personal care products, and my food, because we learned, or I learned, you know, through all of this from different doctors that our skin is our biggest organ. And so I started reading every functional medicine book I could. And 
I started diving in and looking at, you know, EWG and, and, you know, the environmental working group and figuring out, you know, what chemicals I should avoid. And that's why I, what I laid out in my new book, you know, how to detox your cleaning supplies, your beauty products, your personal care products and your food, because as much as it's about food, it, you know, it's also about, you know, what you're putting on your skin. Cause our, everything you put on your skin from your sunscreen to your chapstick, which I'm sure you ladies both know gets absorbed, you know, into your bloodstream. Yep. And once I really started to clean all that up, I mean, I had no idea why people bought like, you know, go green cleaning products. I was mm -hmm. like, what are you doing? Like, why are people buying organic? I don't get it. The organic lettuce looks just like the conventional lettuce. It doesn't make sense to me. Right. And I started to realize, oh my gosh, there's chemicals in all these foods and there's chemicals in all these products and I'm eating them. And this is, this is insane. And my liver enzymes were so high, they wanted to do a liver biopsy on me. And so as soon as I started to literally detox my entire life. My liver enzymes started to normalize. My life started to like, everything started to balance my hormones. I mean, there was a lot of different protocols I had to do, but the majority of it, that was a big, big part of it. And let me ask you, going back to before you started having these symptoms and before you were at 20 years old, like almost on your deathbed, what was your diet and lifestyle like? Because I feel like even if we're living the typical American diet, these diseases usually generally don't come on until later in life. So do you think that you were in a maybe a house with mold or you were, you know, using extra toxic ingredients? Like, do you have any sense of that? Like, were you eating fast food every day? Can you tell us a little bit about your lifestyle back then? Of course, actually, I was not like I actually was not eating any fast foods. I was eating, you know, conventional spinach and conven conventional chicken mm -hmm. and, you know, eating a healthy diet. I mean, I, I would use like Splenda or Crystal Light because I had, you know, mm -hmm. had no idea in college I drank Diet Coke. But you were working at Vogue. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> totally, totally, totally. Who could totally, blame you? Totally. Yeah. Right. So like, that's really what was going on there. But overall, I was very, very, very healthy and health conscious. And so what I write about in my book is that I have a kind of like a handicap to detox and it's called methylation. And so we're all born with these genes called MTHFR. And so kids with autism are missing two snips of the gene but I'm missing one of them. And so when you're missing one or two, it handicaps your ability to detox on a daily basis. So you have to really support your body on a daily basis to detox. And so that's what I had to learn how to do. That's fascinating. So yeah. you're missing one of the genes and how did you discover that? Who discovered that? So a functional medicine doctor, it's just a blood test. And I have it all like listed out what to ask for in my book. I did three pages of every functional medicine test that I did worth hundreds of thousands of dollars because I wanted to hand over the keys to somebody else and, you know, steer their life in the right direction. Because I wish I had 10 years ago, a list of all the tests that would give me the actual results and not false negatives. And so I lead people through like hormone tests and the, you know, intestinal permeability test for gut health and the two Lyme disease tests, the two labs that I, I trust and the ones that finally gave me positive results. And so that's where I put a lot of the information about the MTHFR. I also wrote about a lot in the intro and I get into some really detailed information about it so that some, because a lot of people are suffering from this, it's actually 30% of our population, but Western medicine doesn't test for it. So a lot of people who are having some kind of toxicity, whether it's eczema, arthritis, you know, acne, bloating, gut issues, headaches, you know, fatigue, whatever it may be, a lot of it's just toxicity. And so you need a detox and by detox, obviously, you know, as you ladies know, it's not about starving yourself on a juice mm -hmm. cleanse that like media makes it out to be, but it's right. really just about like eating organic, getting eight hours of sleep, skin brushing, Epsom salt baths, infrared saunas, like supporting your body's ability to detox on a daily basis and really supporting your liver. So, you know, it's really just helping your body out every day to get these toxins out of your body. Cause whether it's car exhaust or tap water or, you know, pesticides and herbicides or, or pharmaceutical drugs, everything is, you know, goes through our liver and, and we become toxic. 
Yeah. And it's so frustrating because the media does make it out to be this, you know, starvation thing. And then they say that, well, your body naturally detoxes itself. So there's no purpose in doing this cleanse. Well, yes, it does. But you have to give it the tools that it needs to do so. And you can't be blocking it by these toxic lifestyle choices and environmental choices. That I mean, environmental factors that you have no control over. So we've got to help the body detox and to have a gene on top of that that you have no control over, you know, you, you got to do it. I absolutely support what you're saying. And I can't wait to read your book. It sounds- yeah. And the Lyme disease as well. I mean, I, I'm from Long Island, so I know a lot of people that have battled Lyme disease and that alone is a mighty feat. But then on top of that, it's, it's, I was thinking about all of the things you were, all of your symptoms you were describing and then this, the issues that your body was dealing with. And it's like, one could have probably, you know, not created, but not helped your body. And then another one popped up and another one. And, and I'm sure you played the whole game of what caused what, or how did I get that? Or what, and it could be dizzying, but God, kudos to you for really taking control, as you've said, of your own health. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. I applaud you. I haven't done this in a while. Applause. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Oh, thank you. That means so much to me. Well, I really think that, you know, if more people realized what an impact they have on their own health, they could change their lives forever. And I think that we hand over, you know, a lot of what could be our well-being and we put it in the hands of people who really don't know us and don't know our bodies well, they're just going based off of medical facts and how their other patients, you know, react. And we're all very different. And, you know, I really feel like there are so many people struggling. I mean, just last night I had like one of my book launch parties out in New Jersey. And I mean, if there were like over 200 people, and I have to be honest, there were only two people in line out of 200 that didn't have a health issue. And guess what? Mm -hmm. Those 198 people were all women. Everyone was a woman and everyone was ages 17 to 30. Colitis, Crohn's on steroids. And I'm like, Mm. what's going on? This is insane. And you know, if there's so many people suffering, but you know, it's not, they don't look, you know, we don't look sick. So it, that was, it's like, you know, this invisible illness, no one understands what's going on with you because yeah. you look perfectly healthy. Right. Yeah. And so that was a big part of it. You know, my friends from, you know, high school, college did not understand. And in corporate America, I was termed sick girl, you know, because I always had a different health issue. And so people, unless you're in a wheelchair, you know, or you're going through, you know, chemo or something, people really can't relate because it's, it's not, you know, something that's, that's talked about. And I said to myself, I'm going to be the woman that comes out and talks about all of this stuff to help other people who are suffering because you're not alone. And I think that's such a huge thing for women to realize. And and even men that are suffering, like there are so many people suffering out there, but not many people are talking about it, you know? Yeah. And I hate the feeling of, of being judged or being looked on as lazy when you're like, I'm suffering here just because I don't look like it every single day. Sometimes I have energy. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I can go to work. Sometimes I can't. Right. Doesn't mean that I'm not suffering. And so people don't understand that. And that's been brought to light in the Real Housewives show. If you guys watch that. Yes. I was just going to say that. That's so funny. <laughs> it makes me so mad because I watch it and I'm like, I know exactly how she feels. Some days she's fine and some days she's not. And I don't have Lyme disease, but you know, it's like just because she's able to go out to lunch with people and smile for the camera and look good one day doesn't mean she's not suffering and sick doesn't mean she's faking it like that makes me so angry and to put that in the media for other people to judge her and then think about other people in their lives and they're like oh they're all these people are faking it they're fine you know that's bs and they actually kind of came full circle with the show and luckily showed that like hey like the conclusion of the women are now like okay you're really sick so that's good for america all these women that are watching this dumb show but you know it makes makes me so angry because people are suffering in silence and are suffering and being judged for it. And it's not fair and it's not right. It's so true. And you know, I I had never talked about this before actually, but when I was on disability, I'll never forget. I had like you know, maybe one day a week, I'd feel really good. Yeah. And so I'd go for a walk and I was, I live in Manhattan. So Mm -hmm. I was so scared. Mm -hmm. I literally was scared shitless. Somebody was going to see me and think that I was like, kidding and out shopping or something, even though I was just going for a walk in Central Park, I couldn't even handle it. And I felt so guilty. But then the next day I'd end up in bed, like chronically sick. And I was just like, oh my God, this is, it's like such a shift in perception because you are really sick in bed, but then it's, it screws with your head. And I think that's why right now that I'm out of the illness portion, I'm really focused on the mind body and doing a lot of, I'll be honest, I'm doing a lot of energy work and a lot of healing body work. And I'm realizing 
we're really all just energy in these bodies. And to really fully heal, you need to do some sort of energy component like a Reiki or an acupuncture or, you know, some kind of, you know, I do this something called like muscle testing, things that can help support your body along with, you know, these functional medicine doctors. And I think that's really, it's a big, big part of it, but it's, it's exhausting and it's a full-time job. And, and like these women I met last night, they're 20 something years old. They don't have the money to go to these doctors and right. they don't have the time to put this all together. I mean, everybody's stressed, everybody's exhausted and it comes down to, I mean, I forget this book that I was reading, but all of this comes down to stress. We're all so stressed out. Mm -hmm. You know, even if we don't think about it, our bodies are stressed, you know, just fighting all of this stuff. It's a rough world nowadays. Amy, I had to ask, I have to ask you, have you ever tried craniosacral therapy? I have. So I had really bad. So here's an interesting story. So when I handed my book in last January, you're going to die at this. So I handed it in on January 1st, 2015. Mm -hmm. And January 5th, my doctor overdosed me on progesterone cream. Oh my God. And it was the universe's way of saying, just because you don't take pharmaceutical drugs anymore, you cannot even do pharmaceutical creams. Mm -hmm. And so I gained 70 pounds in five days. So I'm usually like, I'm 5'2", I'm about 100 pounds. Wait, and I, what? How? <laughs> You should have seen me. I have How did that happen? Kids. Yeah. 70 I mean, pounds in five days? Yeah. So it's my whole endocrine system shut down. Oh my and God. so what happened was the hormones got so high that it kicked up candida in my body. And mm -hmm. so candida attacked every muscle. Yeast didn't come in any other form, which is what I thought was fascinating. I never had a yeast infection, never had sinus problems or anything like that during this time. But it attacked every muscle in my body. And they oh thought I had fibromyalgia or like something really serious with my muscles. Like they, they had no idea what was going on. And so I started doing cranial sacral because even the muscles around my eyes and my ears, I couldn't even touch. And it helped me tremendously, but it ended up, that was before we realized it was candida. But once I got on some really, really strong antifungals, we ended up killing it all. But it took, you know, the die off was me four months in bed. Let's just say that. Wow. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. Yeah. Wow. And I'm just like, I mean, you know, when you're going through this and I went through this after the Lyme, I was just like, I just found myself on my bathroom floor being like, what? Just like looking up at the sky and being like, what What the hell do you want from me? You like, can say it, Amy. Going... I curse all the time. What the fuck? <laughs> right? And I was just like, what the hell is going on here? Like, somebody fucking help me. Like, I am such a good person. Like, I do not deserve this. I'm writing a book. I'm trying to help people. Like, mm -hmm. somebody freaking help me. And like, from that moment on, I like my whole perception shifted. I started to become like a little bit more spiritual and believing in like understanding the universe and, and that everything happens for a reason. And all these messages started to come to me and all these incredible people started to come into my life and mm -hmm. all, a lot of these energy healers and, and different functional medicine doctors. And I started to heal. So I know that's going to be a big part of my next book, but it's really sad when you think you you've made it and then you fall flat on your face again, you know, but you realize there's a lesson in everything. Exactly. And it's so hard to say that sometimes like, okay, what do I have to learn from this damn situation when you're in it? Right. But totally. we can always look back and say, oh my gosh, that taught me this, that now I can spread this message to others. And so in order for you to continue spreading the messages and helping people, maybe there was some lesson in there. And of course, you know, better than I, that you had to learn in order to share with others others because now you've built this platform and these women are listening to you and these women are following you and like Susie and I are going to go buy our books and you know oh, thank you oh for welcome. sure welcome and so I think that our whole life is just the sum of our learning experience and then how we transform that to be something positive in the world mm -hmm. and I love that you're talking about energy medicine I myself am a massage therapist and energy healer and I love craniosacral. Oh, that's amazing. Come well, I love to New that. York. Well, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I should. She's from um, New York. I'm from New York, but I learned it out here. Of course, I moved to Los Angeles and fell into massage therapy and energy healing. And I feel like it's fully yeah. embraced out here. And I'm sure there's many pockets around the country and the world that also embrace it. But I feel like it's not as well known as it could be. Craniosacral in particular is based in the fact that or the belief that your body knows how to heal itself. And I love that. Yes. But see, this is stuff like when I was 20 years old working at Vogue magazine, if you came up to me and said, go meditate and here's a green juice and your body's all energy and it can heal itself. I would have been like, lady, get the <laughs> hell out of my way. <laughs> I got to be somewhere. What are you talking me. about? I got to, I got my boyfriend. I got to meet for dinner. I got the, my parents. I got to make happy. I got to make my friends happy. I got to, I'm 20 years old. I'm doing all this stuff. And then you realize at the end of the day, the only person that you ever need to make happy and the only person that can re really heal you is you. And 
and that probably sounds so crazy to half the people that are listening, but I mean, I'm just at the point where I'm just like, I'm going to tell people exactly how it is. Like, I don't want to BS anybody. I never want anyone to go through the hell that I went to through for 10 very expensive, traumatizing, painful years. And I want to really shortcut this journey because I know so many people are suffering. And as you know, they're not getting the answers that they need. They're getting false information. Yeah. I mean, good for you. And I just feel like what we talked about this on another show, Susie, and you brought up this point that all of us women are so focused on helping others, like whether it's our children and we're giving all of ourselves to the relationships in our lives and doing for others that we're not doing for ourselves. And so it's very mm-hmm. important to come back to ourselves and make sure our needs are being met first so that we can then meet the needs of others. And you said uh, there was a statistic you said where, you know, 80% of a certain people, disease- well, people diagnosed with fibromyalgia. I don't remember the exact statistic, but it's a huge proportion are female. Yeah. And I think a lot of probably autoimmune disorders as well, more women come down with them than men. And if you think about that in a body-mind perspective, your body is attacking itself. Mm-hmm. You're literally attacking your own self. And how many of us tell us we're too fat, we're not skinny enough, we're not pretty enough, we'll never be good enough. We're not good until we've reached this goal. Exactly. We're not good until someone else loves us. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, of course, men can have that too. But I just, from my own personal experience, when I found that out about fib- fibromyalgia, I was like, wow, that's, that's and, and autoimmune issues. It's like, wow, that's yeah. really, really interesting. Our body, our immune systems are attacking our own bodies. Yeah. And it's so sad. I think, I just don't think that a lot of people, they just push down their feelings and they push down all the shit that they're facing every day. And they just want, you know, the picture perfect Instagram thing to look at. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I just, I'm just trying to be as real as I can to, to show people how it really is, because I think that we need more vulnerability and authentic women out there really showing other women the way. Absolutely. And that it's okay to be vulnerable. Like, I mean, I'm 33. I've been single for the last 11 years. I, I had no libido. I lost my period for 10 years. I could barely even, I missed all my friends' weddings and bachelorette parties. And I'm just starting to feel like a woman. I have my period back. I like, I feel alive and amazing. And I'm like, whoa, this is how you guys felt like the last 10 years. This is, this is freaking awesome. <laughs> you know, like this is what people feel like every day. Like, holy shit. Like you're not, I'm not waking up at 12 o'clock noon every day. I'm, you know what I mean? It's just, it's fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to put this out there. You ever want to come to LA? We'll throw you a bachelorette party. We'll show you (laughs) what you've been missing out on. (laughs) You guys are amazing. Seriously. I love you. But we'll keep it. We'll mix in the green juices as well. Yeah. We'll keep it half healthy. And like everyone says, like the older you get, the worse you feel. And I only think that that is not necessarily true. It's how are you treating your body and how are you treating yourself and what are you telling yourself every day and how stressed are you? And it's a holistic approach. And when you change all those things, you can feel like that 21-year-old again. Totally. I agree completely. I mean, I have clients that are like in their 50s and 60s and feeling amazing. I mean, my parents are living proof. They're like 65 and they look like they're 40. I mean, they look amazing and feel incredible and their inflammation has been like slashed to zero. Yeah. We were looking at what magazine is that over there, Susie? Energy oh, Times? Yeah, Christy Brinkley's on the cover. Let me grab it. Yeah, she's 62 years old. She looks stunning. She could pass for like 30. I mean, you know, she's doing something right. So it's like there's all these people. And then there's this one woman on my Instagram feed, and she is like, oh, my gosh, I think she's 80 years old, lives a raw food diet, has long, beautiful hair. She's thin and vibrant. She does videos about what she eats every day. And you would think she was like, 35 to 40 and she's like 75 to 80 you know so amazing it's so amazing yeah it's really it's just really amazing when you can see results in other people and they kind of show you the way you know what i mean yeah absolutely all right food heals nation we'll be right back with amy's tips for taking command of your health Food Heals Nation, if you are looking for the highest quality supplements, the most luscious organic skincare, and a brand name that you can trust to be free from toxic chemicals, look no further than the Global Healing Center. I have been using their products for years. Their Parfait Visage face lotion literally makes my skin look younger. And it comes in a beautiful bottle, so it is perfect as a gift as well. And the Oxy Powder Colon Cleanse Capsules are the most powerful detox supplements I have ever ever used. They get everything out and they don't leave you feeling full or uncomfortable. 
The mission of the Global Healing Center is to bring back good health, positive thinking, happiness, and love, and they want to help you realize that your body is a self-healing mechanism. Well, I couldn't agree more, so I've teamed up with Dr. Group and the Global Healing Center to bring you a discount exclusive to Food Heals listeners. Go to their website at globalhealingcenter.com, pick out the items you want, and use the discount code FOODHEALS, all one word, for 20% off your purchase. Plus, free shipping to the U.S. and Canada. 20% off is a great deal, Food Heals Nation. I love their products, and I know you will, too. You are listening to the Food Heals Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. All right, we're back with Amy Valpone, whose passion is to help others create a healthy and clean lifestyle. She knows first and foremost how hard it can seem to find time in our hectic lives to make home-cooked, nutritious meals. Before she was a celebrity chef and health advocate, Amy lived a fast-paced lifestyle in Manhattan, working for Ralph Lauren Corporate and Vogue magazine. But she firmly believes that if you want to assure a healthy body, you must take control of your own lifestyle. So, Amy, tell us, where should people start? Definitely. I mean, one really great place to start is with your food. And so in my new book, I really take people through how to detox your food and what that actually means and little changes that you can make every day. And so whether it's, you know, making something super small, like getting rid of the refined table salt, that white salt you see on the, on the table every time you go to eat out and replacing it with real sea salt, not something that you see, you know, mass produced, something that you find at a whole foods market or in your local health food store, you know, swapping that out. So let's, let's talk about this because this is one of my personal passions, salt and teeth. Don't ask me why or how that happened, but they are. So tell (laughs) us, tell our ass friends, live off of salt and tea. It's like amazing. Oh no, I said teeth, like healing your teeth naturally. I said tea. (laughs) I love tea too. So let's talk about salt. What's the difference between processed iodized table salt that we, we all know and sea salt or fleur de sel? Tell us the difference. Definitely. So the table salt that you find, you know, at the restaurant when you go out to eat is heavily refined and inflammatory. And so sea salt is full of minerals. So it's actually amazing for everything that you're doing throughout the day, because a lot of us are not getting a lot of these minerals in the foods that we eat, because, you know, these days, a lot of the soil, the vegetables that are being grown aren't in nutrient rich soil. And so it's just a great way to kind of get your body working in all aspects. And my doctors always had me use sea salt in water or just add sea salt to everything. I mean, I use so much sea salt, it's insane. And it doesn't bloat you, it doesn't cause inflammation, you know, it doesn't do anything, you know, that regular you know, refined white table salt does. And, and so you do like a Himalayan salt, a pink sea salt, but I would stick to a really good quality. And sometimes I find that people have a real resistance to this because we've been told at least through the 80s, and early 90s, salt is bad. It raises your blood pressure. Use it sparingly, if at all. Why is the sea salt different? So the sea salt really is completely different. And I learned this from um, Mark Hyman, who's a medical doctor and yeah. functional doctor. And he's just wonderful. And he it was explaining to me that it's because of the mineral count that's in sea salt. It, and it's not refined. So it's not stripped of all the, all the good stuff. It's actually helping your body get through, you know, we need these minerals and we need salt to get, our body needs it. We're mostly made of water, right? So our body needs this on a daily basis to just do regular functions. And so that's why so many people see so many incredible benefits just from using sea salt. So I would just start adding that to some of your foods, maybe putting it in some of your water, different things like that. That's just a great, just a good, easy swap that you can make that people don't even often think about. Yeah, absolutely. And how can we create flavor without gluten, dairy, and soy, and sugar? Because we know those are allergens we want to get out of our diet. How can we create good flavorful food? Definitely. You know, I wrote an article about this on Mind Body Green, like I think it was last year. And so I really like talk to people about how you can create flavor without these foods and how you really don't need those processed condiments that sit on your refrigerator door. And so just little swaps and little things that you can do. You know, for instance, you can soak cashews, which are incredible, you know, for 12 hours and then make some creamy dips. Today, Mm -hmm. I made about four different, you know, cream cheese like spreads out of soaked cashews. And then I added a whole bunch of herbs and, and, you know, cherry tomatoes and spices and fresh herbs have been really incredible for me too. So if you, I mean, you don't even have to cut them up, just rip them with your hands. I I mean, I'm like a rabbit, just rip them and throw them into salads. (laughs) So 
everything from chives to scallions to basil and cilantro and rosemary and thyme. And, you know, there's so many herbs that we don't even think about. And there's so much flavor. If you just add a little bit of fresh herbs and some fresh lemon juice with freshly cracked pepper and sea salt, your taste buds, your mind will be blown. But if you just make a regular salad with iceberg lettuce and refined table salt and like the pepper that comes in the shaker and some processed dressing, like you're not going to be satisfied. And it's like, it's just completely inflammatory. Yeah. You know, so really switching and switching gears and, and figuring out how can I make this like an anti-inflammatory option, but keep the flavor profile really high. So like even freshly squeezed orange juice on salads, you know, with a little bit of my new obsession is avocado oil. Have you guys tried it? Yes. yes. <laughs> we live oh, in California. Oh my gosh. Oh, I know. I forgot. Sorry. I'm like the city dweller. <laughs> it is mind blowing. I'm literally like, I don't even touch olive oil anymore. I'm like, I love avocado oil and the, the smoke point is so high. So I do a lot of avocado oil and, and some coconut oil as well. There are but so many flavorful. Flavor. Yeah. There, sorry to interrupt you. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. Uh, I just get excited. There's so many <laughs> flavorful nut oils. Uh, for a while, when I found hazelnut oil, yes. I was going insane. I was just, I was putting on everything. I would, I would just, you know... I wouldn't even put any kind of vinegar on my salads. I would just put hazelnut oil and, and sea salt and pepper, and I was so happy. There's also pistachio oil and walnut oil, avocado oil. There's so many different types of oils you can use that are so rich in flavor and healthy. And olive oil turns cancerous or what does it turn? It turns toxic. Yeah, it's like a carcinogen it's when a, you when you yeah, when the the heat is too high. Exactly. Thank you. So olive oil turns into a carcinogen when it's heated at high temperatures and so you really don't want to cook with olive oil at all. If you're going to have olive oil, you want to have it raw. You do not want to cook with it. So all the oils you guys were talking about, of course, I have to add coconut oil. And I also love the suggestion you had about making the nut milk because when I discovered this, it was like one of those aha moments because I was like a dairy addict before I went clean and now I can't stand it. I think it's disgusting and it makes me feel terrible. But going from a dairy addict to a clean diet is hard because you you crave that creamy flavor and that creamy taste. So I discovered almond milk, rice milk, all these things at the grocery store. But the thing about those is they don't, they're processed, they don't taste that great. You can literally make this at home so quickly, so easily, and it lasts. You can just have the almonds or have the cashews in your house. They last so long, and then whenever you want to make it, you just soak them overnight. In the morning, you have the creamiest, most delicious milk that you can drink by itself, or you can add to soups. You can make salad dressings. You can make so many things, and I just think it for anyone that was like addicted to dairy like I was who needs the creaminess in their life. It's so easy to have and it won't cause inflammation in your body. It won't make you feel like hell, like the way dairy used to make me feel. Completely. I agree completely. And, you know, even like things like white beans and chickpeas, I mean, you just puree those and soak them, you know, in your food processor and you get such a creamy spread. Avocado is super creamy. If you get a really rip of avocado, like full fat coconut milk is amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, things that we don't even think about bananas, you know, that are really, really creamy and wonderful. I mean, even tahini has done wonders for me or like a really, really good, you know, almond butter. But again, with almond butter, you just want to make sure as you both know, you know, some of these almond butters, you look on the back of the ingredient list and it's like sugar, palm oil, canola. It's like salt. You, you just, anyone that's listening, you want your almond butter or your cashew butter, whatever it is that you're eating to just be almonds or just be cashews, not roast. I mean, they could be dry roasted, but not roasted because most of the time they're roasted in canola oil and refined salt. Same Mm -hmm. thing goes for store-bought nuts. And I have clients come to me and they're like, oh, I'm eating so healthy. I have nuts for a snack. And I'm like, what kind of nuts? And they say, you know, peanuts and planters, peanuts. And first of all, peanuts are so high in mold. So I buy clients off of mold, mold nuts, which are peanuts and pistachios, but also they're soaked in canola oil and refined salt. So really, as you guys know, it's buying the raw form, raw almonds, raw cashews, you know, macadamia nuts, whatever it may be. Yep. But have you tried, I know you just mentioned hazelnut oil. Have you tried a macadamia nut oil or pumpkin seed oil. I, yes. I just tried it by... Um, I've tried, it? Yeah, I've tried macadamia. Yes. Oh my God. It's so good. It's like one of my favorite things. Uh, now Foods has this has a line of stuff. So I've just literally... They, they were like sending me a bunch of them and I was literally just pouring them all over my salads. But <laughs> I learned that from... Um, when you just said about olive oil is so interesting. I learned that from um, Frank Littman, who's a medical doc, a functional doctor in New York. And he said... 
you know, never use olive oil to cook, only use it in, in its raw form, like yeah. on salads or dips, things like that. You never want to heat it, which I thought was fascinating because I don't know about you ladies, but no one ever taught me that growing up. I mean, no. I don't know. it was like, make that eggplant parm when I was in my, you know, my, uh, my younger years, like on high heat with the yeah. high flame and it was smoking and I was inhaling all that good stuff. <laughs> right, right. I know there's so much mis- misinformation out there. So you just got to do your research. You just got to read your ingredients, just like you were saying, and you can really transform your health. So thank you so much for all of that great information. And can you tell us what is the difference in your opinion between a detox and a cleanse? Definitely. So a detox is really about getting the bad stuff out of your body, you know, all the bad bugs. So whether it's candida or parasites, pathogens, Lyme disease, whatever it may be, those kind of bad critters, kind of like the garbage in your body, getting rid of it. And then that's everything from eating organic. And so why is eating organic a detox? Because detoxing is really about helping and supporting the bombardment Mm -hmm. that's of toxins that are on your liver every day. So when we lessen our body burden on a daily basis, so maybe instead of using, you know, a toxic sunscreen or chapstick, we switch to like a natural brand or an organic brand or, you know, eating organic food, skin brushing to help your lymph system move and, you know, Epsom salt baths different things like that, that can really help your body. I mean, and something I do not talk about on my blog yet, or in my book, because it's, it's quite personal, but something, you know, for people who are struggling, I know something that's really helped me with my Lyme disease was, um, organic coffee enemas in terms Mm -hmm. of detox. And so it kind of does a hiccup on your liver and and releases the bile. And I mean, I couldn't make it through my day without them for about three years because my die off was so bad, but it's really, it's really about supporting that liver on a daily basis. You know, the infrared saunas, the skin, you know, all can we, of that. Can we go back to those? Can we go back to the enemas? Because I'm curious. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, so my, I, uh, I didn't know how you guys were going to, I didn't know how you guys were going to take it. I was like, oh you know, no, we we know about them. We've, I've never, you've done one, haven't you, Ellie? I've done multiple, not one. She looked at me with disdain right now. Wow. She's like, you don't remember? I told you about no, it. No, every time you're... No, I think that they're the one of the most healing things that you can do. They are part of the Gerson Protocol, and the Gerson That's Protocol right. has a higher incidence of curing cancer than any Western medicine protocol. It's higher than radiation, surgery, chemotherapy. It's part of the program. You do them every day. Sometimes when you're super toxic, you have to do them more than once per day as you're doing a cleanse, as you're green juicing, as you're healing your body because what they discovered is that coffee somehow leaches to the toxic matter in your body and pulls it out. And so, you know, Avita, who we've had on the podcast before, that was part of her healing journey when she healed from cancer. But she always, she writes articles about it and she jokes about, hey, you're putting your coffee in the wrong hole, people. I was going to say, it doesn't do that going down down your mouth, but it it does does up your bum. I know. I don't know why. (laughs) See, See, I have a personal prejudice against it because my maternal grandmother had suggested them as long as as with green juice enemas to my mother when she had appendicitis Mm -hmm. and if she had done them her appendix would have burst but Mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with what we're talking about here we're talking about Mm -hmm. detoxing and cleansing well i'm sure i mean i would say do it under the supervision supervision of a holistic practitioner that can really guide you you know don't just start doing not your local barista at starbucks yeah (laughs) Oh, sorry, sorry. that was another bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and make sure you're using organic and filtered water. That's like the big one. So how long did um, you do these, Amy? You said these, you did these for three years? You know, I had to do it. I could not get through my day. I mean, the diet was so bad I had to migraine until I did it every... I mean, I had to make it every morning. Let me tell you, it was the most time-consuming, exhausting. I feel like I have all this time in the morning now, and I'm like, wait, I was saying to my mother the other day, I'm like, I have all this time in the morning now. She's like, probably because you're not making the freaking coffee enema every morning. (laughs) It's like, you have to make it, you got to strain it, you got to put it in the enema, but you got to let it cool so you don't burn the hell out of your ass. Like, it's like, (laughs) I I was there for many times. I was like, okay, I totally just burnt the hell out of my ass. But um, (laughs) now, now I'll do it maybe... I mean, you know, I used to sleep on a biomat. I had an infrared sauna. I did the animals. When I moved I downtown, know the biomat. Like that thing's amazing. Yeah. When I moved downtown like four months ago, I told, I, you know, my parents like came on my moving day and I said, take all my medical things. I want them out of my apartment because I'm starting a new life. So I don't do the biomat. I don't do the infrared saunas and I don't do, I do coffee animals maybe like once a week or once every two weeks because I just, just for like a little while, I just need to learn how to live and to get out of that mentality of like, 
feeling like I'm sick and trying to get myself yeah. better. I just needed yeah. to just, it's almost like a mindset thing. So I'll probably get my sauna back in my apartment, maybe in a few months, just because I really liked it. But um, the, the coffee enemas, I really like them. Um, it's not something I'm going to write about on my blog yet. You know, I'm the, the last thing I need while dating is like someone to Google my name and then have that come up. And I'm like, I think I'll just wait a little bit. Okay, wait till you're married and then talk about it. I'm just oh, kidding. Boy. At I'll least like, engaged. I'll send you the link when that comes up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, welcome to the dating world. But um, anyway, so yeah, I just feel like I needed to start to just live a little bit and to have some fun and to not be so, you know, not fanatical, but just not focus on the medical stuff. I needed to learn how to be a 33 year old woman who's healthy and thriving and and not have to feel like I had to do all these protocols every day. Well, once you're healed and you're maintaining yourself, there's no need. And maybe it's just something you do once in a while, like you said, once a week or get your sauna back and do it once in a while. But you are main, you're doing it to maintain your health every day because you were in a healing process of getting better, but now you're healed. And so now you just have to maintain it with all the things you're doing with your food and your healthy well-being and your mindset. And so you don't need to do these things for the rest of your life. Those are the healing protocols that you did to get to where you are. But I re- I really understand how you were talking about the the trauma of it and being in that mindset. And uh, I mean, so many doctors, so many years of different diagnoses, of not being believed, of getting wrong diagnoses, whatever. I totally understand how you're like, I got to move away from that and try to look towards the new, look towards the future. Completely. You've been through a lot, lady. I know. It's, you know, it's funny. I don't even think it. I kind of just, I don't really realize it until people like, are like, holy cow, you've been through so much. And I'm like, I have. I think <laughs> I just was numb for like 11 years. Well, what, cho- now- what choice did you have? You know, totally. it's like you, you, you went through the path and you did what you had to do to get better. And you did, which is the amazing part. Thank you. You're so amazing. I mean, I really, it's just like you. I just want to help as many people as I can and, and really lift them up, you know, and, and show them that they're not alone. Well, we really appreciate that, Amy. So tell everyone where they can buy your book, how they can find you online, stalk you, get on your email list. (laughs) You guys are amazing. I love you. So my (laughs) website is thehealthyapple.com and I'm The Healthy Apple on all social media. So Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Pinterest. I haven't jumped on the Snapchat or Periscope yet because I I literally am just so exhausted from every form of social media. I'm trying to just zen out. (laughs) So my book is called Eating Clean, the 21 day plan to detox, fight inflammation and reset your body. And it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, uh, Whole Foods Market, Costco, Sam's Club. It's it's in a lot of outlets. So I'm really, I'm really grateful. And the feedback has been wonderful. So yeah, I hope that uh, that it really resonates and helps a lot of people. It definitely will. It will. Thank you. You guys are amazing. We need to play. We I will. Need to get <laughs> when you come oh, to oh, LA, oh. come be in our studio and then we can go get dinner at Gracias Madre, which is like the hip West Hollywood vegan restaurant down the street. And we then we're going to make up for all the bachelorette parties that she didn't go to. Yes. Totally. Oh my, we're going to have like a green juice bachelorette, like smorgasbord. <laughs> we're going to have the best time. <laughs> yes. Come on down. And can you leave us with a tweet of all, Amy? I think it really comes down to the fact that I'm not telling you to eat clean and live clean because you should do it, but because once you see life this way, you'll never go back. And I think that's just a really strong point to leave people with, because I think once they see how amazing it feels to eat clean and live clean and take care of yourself, like there's just no going back. And people say to me all the time, but I'm going to miss, you know, this and this, that. And I'm like, no, once you see how bad that makes you feel, like, why would you like, don't you want to do what makes you feel good every day? You know? Don't you want to do what feels good every day? Tweet it to Amy at the <laughs> healthy apple. Tweet it to us at Food Heals Nation. Use the hashtag Food Heals Podcast in your posts so we can see your posts. Amy, thank you so much again for being here. And please come back. As soon as you're in LA, come back. Thank you. Thank I you, will. Amy. You're both amazing. I'm sending you so much love and the biggest hug from New York City. We can't wait to meet you. We're going to do it in the future. Thank you. You too. Thank you for having me. I'm really honored. Thank you, Amy. All right, talk soon. Bye. 
That's our show. Thanks for listening. Sign up for our mailing list at foodhealsnation.com and receive a free gift from us. That's right. We have created a brand new guide for you, our Food Heals Nation. Yep. The guide is called Health, Longevity, and Weight Loss Secrets, and it's full of tips, tricks, and secrets collected from some of our favorite guests from the Food Heals podcast. In it, you will learn crazy cool stuff like how to live to 99 with no wrinkles. Susie's grandfather. That's right. How to attract the one. Ooh, how to never get a cavity again. My favorite. Yes, my favorite too. And the real secret to weight loss, or maybe that's my favorite. They're all my favorites. And And so much more. (laughs) So sign up for our newsletter at foodhealsnation.com. We won't spam you, we promise. No, we won't send you too many emails. Trust us, we're too busy for that anyway. (laughs) (laughs) So go to foodhealsnation.com to get your free guide, health, longevity, and weight loss secrets from the Food Heals podcast by subscribing today. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to change their status update from hashtag blessed to hashtag OMG even more blessed than yesterday, hashtag loving life. If you experience any of these symptoms, make sure to tweet a Kardashian immediately.